Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Listen, I saw a video yesterday. Uh, it was really, really disturbing. It was about how they had built mental health facilities, hospitals, they called them, back around the time of the Civil War, you know, 1850s, 1860s. 1870s um, and I don't know if you know it but uh, the tribe was behind psychiatry from the beginning I took psychology in high school I took psychology again in college and I took psychology in a um, vocational school setting for uh, healthcare type stuff I wanted to get some uh, medical training you know, like EMT type stuff, nursing type stuff. Um, so I've taken psychology three times in my life. And um, psychology is very kosher from the very beginning. Uh, Sigmund Freud, Pavlov, um, Jung. Uh, I'm pretty sure they were all kosher and all the rest of them. But uh, this guy that did the video, I'm going to put the link in the description and in the comments. It's going to be pinned. He um, mentioned that one of the reasons that they were taking people and putting them in these facilities was uh, obviously if they were, you know, schizophrenic or whatever. But one of the reasons was religious fanaticism. Oh, what is that? Somebody that actually believes the Bible? Uh, yeah. So what they were doing is they were locking up the parents. And uh, God only knows what they were doing to the women in this these hospitals. Maybe it was another uh, Lolita Express, if you know what I'm talking about. The Ep Stain Island. Uh, you know, where they were kidnapping the girls and chaining them up to, you know, a bed or whatever they were doing. I don't know. I've never been there. I was never invited, so I don't know exactly what's going on. Uh, but, um, you know, I'm kind of wondering if maybe that's, you know, what they did. Uh, found somebody that didn't have any family or no political connections or money. Just took them, stuck them in these places and used them for sex slaves. I don't know. Um, but uh, they uh, would take the children away from the families and, uh, I, I don't know, put them to work, make them sex slaves, I don't know. But uh, you ought to look at some of the sizes of some of these buildings. Some of these facilities were on 100 acres. Were there that many crazy people in the United States? Or were they taking children from the families even back then i think that's what the true answer is um, just georgia alone one year they lost over uh, i forget exactly how many kids but it was in the 700s in a year just one state 700 and something kids in one year vanished from the child services um, division where they took kids away from the parents for various reasons the kids vanished and then one of the state legislatures opened up an investigation and she and her husband both committed suicide you get the picture maybe they had something on uh, Bill and Hill Ari uh, Ari you know uh, you know, the tons that weigh a clint, a clint, uh, that weigh a ton, yeah. But uh, that's just one state and one year. And uh, I've read accounts of that here in Florida, that children just vanish out of the system and they don't know where they are. What are they, satanic sacrifices? Are they uh, sex slaves somewhere? I don't know. This stuff's been going on forever. Oh, it makes me makes me sick, and uh, well, 
Look at the Boy Scouts. They uh, a number of years ago they started letting sod on mites into the uh, Boy Scouts. Next thing you know, they're declaring bankruptcy because they had so many sex abuse uh, lawsuits against them. Golly gee, how can you can you imagine? Uh, how could that happen? Possibly, yeah. So, you know what? I'm looking forward to these church people being persecuted and either even uh, they're going to be given a choice, deny Christ to save their lives or die for the faith. And I bet you 90-something percent of them will uh, end up denying Christ. Little do they know, because they never bother to read their Bible, well, let's read Christ's words. No, I don't want to paraphrase. Well, here we go. Luke 12 and verse 9. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. So you deny Christ, and Christ will say, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So I'm, I'm sick of churchgoers. I'm just so sick of them. I've been dealing with them for almost 30 years. Vile, disgusting creatures. Personally, I've met nicer unbelievers than I have people in church. And that's oftentimes true. I, yeah, I know there's some nice, sincere people in the churches, but, uh, you know, what do you expect when you have a wolf for a pastor, you know? And uh, I like what Charles Haddock Spurgeon had to say, that a time would come that um, instead of shepherds feeding the sheep, you would have... Uh, wolves entertaining the goats i think i'm paraphrasing but yeah and that's what you got you got wolves entertaining goats in churches now i was invited to go to calvary chapel down in fort lauderdale they had a guy down there he uh i think it, i don't i think it i forget his name well i know his name but uh if memory serves me correctly, and I could be wrong, um, some really attractive woman enticed him into a motel room, and they, uh, she had set him up with a, uh, they had videos of him uh, performing his, uh, her, her and him, uh, her performing services for him, had it on video, and she uh, basically told him, well, you know, pay me money or this video happens and you, you know, you're not going to be pastor of this mega church. And um, he decided not to pay and just retired. I, I believe he's getting like a hundred and something thousand dollars a year for retirement. Because after all, even if you pay, you know, what's to stop them from doing the same thing again? So that's my understanding. And if I'm wrong, uh, I'll retract it and make an apology. But, uh, you know, I went to that church and it was so large, it took me 15 minutes to find the car in a parking lot because it was that big. And, uh, I mean, thousands of people go there every week, thousands but they had rock and roll music and the guys telling jokes and talking about his golf game and stories and, you know, maybe one or two Bible verses. And I listened to this whole thing and I was like, wow, if Satan was himself was sitting in the, the, uh, in the pews, he wouldn't find not one thing offensive, really. So I was like, wow, unbelievable. That was the first and last time 
Um, little did I know what Calvary Chapel was, but um, I know what it is now. But uh, yeah, the pastor retired, so uh, rather than pay. But, uh, you know, and that's not to say I wouldn't do the same thing. I, you know, I don't know. You know, it's uh, when you're somebody like Elvis Presley and you got some of the most gorgeous women in the world throwing themselves at you every day, uh, it's tough to, you know, it's easy to say, oh, well, I would never do that. But, uh, yeah, I'm not going to say that because, yeah, I don't know. Lord, keep me from that kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah. But I don't think, I, I honestly, I wonder, in a mega church like that with 5,000 people, I wonder if there, was, if there would be 50 people in that whole place that would die for their faith. I don't know. The Lord knows I don't. But, uh, you know, they never, they never stand firm against the wicked things in this world. And they can't because... They're part of the uh, they're part of the system with their tax exempt status. They're chartered by the state. They're a state chartered tax exempt business. And uh, and I'm sure the I'm sure the bank holds the mortgage on the church. And uh, they got a little provision in mortgages that uh, they can call what's called what is called calling the loan. In other words, you got to pay us the full amount that you owe by, you know, a certain amount of time. I don't know, maybe seven days, maybe 30 days, maybe 60, 90 days. I don't know. But there's a provision in every mortgage. So if they want, they can take the church. If you don't pay it, they can foreclose. I can see why the Lord said to owe no man anything but love. And the Bible says that the borrower is servant to the lender. Some Bible versions say slave. You know, maybe that's a better translation than what's in the King James. I don't know. Maybe. You know? Well, if you're somebody's servant, yeah. It's kind of along the same line. So, all right, everybody. What can I tell you? All right, uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.